Are you tired of spending hours manually enriching, qualifying and routing leads? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take an AI first approach to lead management, saving you and your sales team a ton of time. We'll be using HubSpot as our CRM and we're gonna build an automation in Zapier that leverages the power of ChatGPT. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a fully automated system that handles all the heavy lifting and crushes those manual repetitive tasks so that your sales team can focus on what really matters, closing deals. My name is Jan, I'm one of the co-founders of 9X and at 9X we train business professionals like you in AI and automation and show you how to leverage tools like Zapier to improve the way you work. In this video, I'll show you exactly how you can set up this Zapier automation for yourself that leverages AI to categorize and enrich your leads and ensure only the qualified leads make their way to your sales team. So as I mentioned, we'll be using HubSpot for this demo. And I just want to quickly point out exactly what I mean by how time consuming some of these manual tasks can be. So let's say here in my HubSpot, I've just had a new contact sign up. Uh, maybe they signed up to a webinar. Um, what we might be asking, maybe someone in the marketing team or a RevOps person to do before it makes its way uh, to sales is do a bit of lead qualification. So we might see based on the uh, title, the, C, the job title of the person that just fit, signed up to our webinar, that we might be going here and saying, okay, so this is CEO, I'll mark this as an executive. Um, let's check a look at the email. We can see that this is a business email. This type of like lead categorization is very useful in setting up in your CRM so that you can easily bucket uh, leads into different categories and then personalize like the different outreach or which salesperson it goes to based on these uh, factors. We then might be asking our RevOps team to assign a lead score and finally sort of qualify the lead and send it on to the sales team and open this up. These all seem like pretty easy tasks, but when we're dealing with maybe hundreds of incoming inbounds every day, this really starts to add up. So here I wanna show you how we can take an AI first approach to this. So this is my AI first lead enrichment and routing uh, automation in Zapier that I wanna walk you through now step by step. And basically how this Zap starts is we're using a HubSpot trigger and this is whenever a new contact is added to a list. And what I've set up in HubSpot is a form and also a list and I'll show you that now. So we have here our webinar sign up form which is just asking first name, last name, email, company and the job title so when we're running these webinars whenever someone wants to sign up this is the information that we're asking for we also have a list set up in hubspot and the way this one's called new inbound leads this one is basically listening to whenever someone submits the form then they will be added to this list the reason why we're using this new contact in a list trigger, if some of you have already built HubSpot automations in Zapier before, you'll probably know there is also a new form submission trigger. So I could just as easily cut this list out and say, hey, whenever someone fills out that webinar sign up form, I wanna trigger my Zap. Um, the thing is when we use this new contact in a list, we get access to a lot more information. In the form submission, you'll basically only receive those fields that you've asked for in the form. So in our case, the first name, last name, email, company, and the job title. Whereas if we use the new contact in a list, and let me just show you one of the recent records that pulled in. So we actually had the CEO of Zapier sign up to one of our webinars. So I see here, Wade from Zapier. Because I've used new contact added to a list, I also have the ID already of the contact in HubSpot, which we would not have if we were using the form submission trigger. And I also have this um, primary associated company, which I'll explain a little bit later. So now that we have our new contact uh, added to the list and coming in here, we can sort of go down what I've done in this uh, Zab. So first of all, what I wanna do is do those categorization steps that I showed before in HubSpot. So first of all, we're gonna use ChatGBT to categorize what type of email the person just signed up with. So I can show you how I've set up this prompt. Um, so all I'm doing is using a ChatGPT app and the conversation action. So this one is just like how you would prompt ChatGPT. And if I look into the configuration, we can see my prompt here. So what I'm telling ChatGPT is giving it some instructions saying you're tasked with classifying an email address domain as either business, educational or private. And so here now I've basically mapped 
And one of the HubSpot fields that we do get from this new contact added to a list is what email domain they signed up with. So here we can see uh, Wade signed up with a zapier.com email address. So this is the email domain that I'm gonna be asking ChatGBT to analyze, giving it some instructions. And lastly, what I'm doing is telling it in the assistant instructions here, how I would like it to reply to this analysis. And what I'm using here is a very uh, quirk to uh, Zapier, which are these named variables. I will leave a link to the article below explaining these. But what's very cool, what these do is when you tell uh, ChatGPT to output the format like this, where we have what is known as camel case. So you can see email type, it's one word, but the second word is capitalized. And then we have some uh, rounded brackets, and then I'm just putting in the output of the response. So if I test this now, what we can see is on the response from ChatGBT, so its reply is email type is business. So it knows that at zapier.com is a business email address. And what by using these named variables from Zapier, what we're able to do is actually pull out whatever is in between these curly brackets and have it as a separate variable. And this makes it very useful for when we wanna map this later back into HubSpot. So in this step, what I've identified is that we have a business email. I now have a second chat GPT step. Again, it's just gonna be a conversation. And here is my prompt. This time I'm asking it based on the person's uh, job title. So in this case, Wade put in CEO. I want it to um, determine what is the seniority of the person. And here I'm giving the list that the different options that HubSpot has for this seniority field. If we take a look at the results, let me retest this step. And we can see again, now I've done the similar thing where I've asked it to reply using this named variable format. So this is my reply from ChatGPT, job seniority executive, and that we have this job seniority uh, named variable extracted so I can use it later for mapping. So they correctly now AI configured out that, hey, a CEO is an executive. Now, before I get into the next steps of this app, I wanna quickly talk to you about HubSpot insights. So HubSpot Insights is a special feature of HubSpot where if a person, a new contact, let's say, signs up with a business email address, so basically the domain here is identified as a company, what HubSpot will do is it will automatically create a company um, and attach it to this contact and we can click into that company now and it basically preloads just based on the domain name. So this is the email address domain name that Sam Alton Altman signed up to our webinar with. And we get access to a bunch of company data. We can see what industry the company is in, uh, a short description about them, how many employees, what's their annual revenue, even where they're located, their time zone and their LinkedIn page. All of this is super useful data when it comes to lead categorization. So I'll head back now to my Zapier Zap so as my zap continues, what I basically want to do now is check, hey, for this contact that just signed up, was HubSpot able to find a company? And if, an, if a company exists, I want to go down and do a bunch more stuff with AI and also calculate a lead score. But if it doesn't, if there's no company, all I want you to do is just, hey, update the contact with this two, uh, these two categorizations that we just did. So saying, hey, the... Um, the email, in this case, if it was just a private person, it would be private. Let's say they signed up with a Gmail address and the job seniority is either gonna be executive, VP, director. Let's just update the contact. However, if a company exists, so the way I've done this is using the paths feature by HubSpot. And I've basically mapped from my uh, new contact in a list step. The thing that we wanna search for is the primary association associated company ID. So this is gonna be that ID of the company in HubSpot. And we can say, hey, if this exists, let's go down the path. And we know then that this person is connected to a company. So if that exists, the first thing we do is we basically wanna get that company's details. So what I'm using is another HubSpot action, get a company. I can just configure this and here I'm mapping that company ID that's connected to my contact. I can, I can see here already that HubSpot is bringing in a lot of the most important data points that I need, but if you have some separate ones, you can also add them here. And let's test this step. So here we can see I'm getting all that information now about Zapier, the year they were founded, um, that they're a software company, how many employees they have, where they're located. All of this data is now accessible in my Zapier Zap. 
And now this is where it gets really exciting. What I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use all those company data points and everything we know about our new lead in our system and have ChatGPT calculate a lead score. So again, all I'm doing here is using the conversation action from ChatGPT. I am using the GBT, uh, I believe 4.0 model. It's so quite a powerful one to do some big analysis. Rather than show you the prompt here, I'm actually gonna open this up in Notion so we can take a really good look. And here we have my lead scoring prompt that I have prepared. I obviously had the help of AI in actually writing this lead prompt, but this lead scoring prompt, sorry. But basically I'll walk you through now step-by-step step what it does. It, here I'm saying you're an AI assistant tasked with calculating a lead score for an inbound sales lead based on provided data points and scoring criteria. Your goal is to analyze the lead information, apply the scoring criteria and provide a, justification, a justified lead score. And so what, it's do, what I'm telling it to do, I'm using these delimiters. These delimiters are very useful when you are working with um, AI in an automated workflow and passing in dynamic data. Because what I'm doing here is here, I'm gonna pass in all the information I already know about the lead coming from the company and also from the information they filled out. And then what I'm doing here in this next delimited section is applying some scoring criteria. And this is where it gets really, really exciting. Previously, if you were doing some sort of lead scoring, you'd probably have your marketing and sales team sitting down with a data analyst, your BI team and saying, hey, these are all the things that are important to us and how we know a lead is good when it comes in or how we know a lead is not quite ready yet for sales. That data analyst will then go and try and convert that in either, either a big SQL query or a big Python script. And then whenever you wanna make changes, you always have to have a new meeting and update the script and it's a, it's a bit difficult. Here you can basically have your VP of sales, someone who's non-technical, write out this scoring criteria and it's always very easy to up, update. So here I'm saying, I'm giving uh, a certain amount of points based on the touch points we've had with this lead. Now, based on their job title and role fit, in our case, we are an AI and automation company. So I'm saying business professionals are plus 15 points, decision makers are plus 10 points. Then we have an industry fit. Uh, ideal industries are SaaS, B2B SaaS tech startups, they get 20 points. And it's so easy um, for me to make changes. So maybe here, instead of the sweet spot being uh, 500 to 2000, maybe now we're going after slightly larger companies and I can just make this one 20 points and this one 15 points. So it's very, very easy to make changes to this. Now in terms of the output, what I'm telling it, I'm giving it the scoring criteria. Here I'm giving it the instructions to how it should go about its task. Then lastly, what I'm doing is giving it an area to provide its explanation. These AI models, they really like talking. So what I've had in different tests, if I've just asked, a good, asked it to only put out a lead score and nothing else, sometimes it will still give an explanation. So here I've said, hey, tell me your explanation, write it in between these justification tags, and then give me the lead score. Here I want the only the final number in between these lead score tags. So let's go over to Zapier and see how this works. So back in Zapier now, I've copy and pasted over that uh, prompt. Here I've basically added the different data points that I have. So their job title, the company, all of this company information that we get from the HubSpot data insights. And then I have just the rest of the prompt here. And let's go and test this one and retest the step. So this, case, this time I'm not using these uh, named variables from Zapier. I wanted to show you a different method about how you can also extract certain data points out of a long, um, let's say, chat GBT response. So here we have the data out and let's take a look. I need to find the reply. And here we have it. Okay, so here's my reply. This is first it's starting, remember it's giving me the justification. So here it's going through and telling me each category, how many points it scored. And lastly, it's giving me Wade's lead score. So Wade actually scored quite highly, 80 points. And what we do now in the next step is I'm using a AI by Zapier feature. So what this one is, it's um, the action or event I'm doing. I'm asking it to analyze and return data. This is an AI by Zapier uh, feature. If I look at how this is configured, what we can do is we can give it a prompt now. And what I'm what I'm doing is I'm basically using AI to extract only the lead score from the previous AI step. So I'm saying, hey, I'm going to give you an AI generated lead evaluation, and I'm putting that response here. So this is going to have all the justification and the final lead score 
in this big block of text and all I want you to output is the lead score. And what we can do is we can determine when we add, we can add what field name do we want and then we need to give a description to the field. And this is gonna tell the AI what type of data we wanna extract from this long text. And here all I've said is extract only the number found between the lead score and closing lead score tags. So if I test this one out now, we can see all we're left with, previously we had this long piece of text. If we look at the data in, this was this long text. And now on the data out, we're left perfectly with the cleaned up lead score. And now we get into the lead routing part, which is very, very exciting. So now that we have our lead score calculated, what we can easily do is basically use, again, the Zapier paths. And what I'm saying is whenever this lead score is greater than 50, and here we can see that it passed the uh, filter because 80 is obviously greater than 50. What I want you to do is now update my HubSpot contact with all the uh, classifications you did, what was the email type, what was the job seniority, what was the lead score. I'm also now going in here and I'll show you a few of the other things that I've set up. If we look at the life cycle stage, and I think I need to scroll down a little bit here. I've basically said in, previously, this one would have come in as a lead. I've now updated this to a marketing qualified lead based on that lead score. I can also show you the lead status. So here what I'm doing is I'm setting the lead status to open. And if we look for the lead score, I'm also mapping that dynamic data from HubSpot. Then the last thing what we need to do is basically alert our sales team. So now sales will get a Slack message saying, hey, a new qualified lead has just come in. Please now go and start working on it. If the lead score is not greater than 50, we have a fallback here where all I'm doing is just updating HubSpot with the data that we calculated. So what was their lead score? Maybe it was 35 and we need to wait a little bit before we assign it to sales. Maybe it was 30. We're still updating all the data. I'm just keeping the marketing lifecycle stage as lead. So now all our sales team have to do is they receive this beautiful Slack message saying, hey, a new lead has been set to marketing qualified. They can basically just open up. This is what I set up in Zapier, also passing in the dynamic link to the lead in HubSpot. So they can just click on this one. And now instead of landing on a lead with no information filled in, they can already see that, hey, this is a marketing qualified lead. They sign up with a business email, the lead score is 80 and they can get to work on closing this deal. So that wraps up the tutorial. I hope you found this useful. In the description below, I'll also be sharing all of the prompts that we used in the different AI steps in my Zap so that you can easily build this for yourself. If you did find this tutorial useful, please give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the Zapier channel. They'll be releasing plenty more AI and automation tutorials, but until next time, happy automating.